So one of the operating systems is much better, but I am forced to use the other one because that is the conclusion of this test. But before we get to that, let's roll it back. You have the framework laptop 13. No, I don't. <sighs> All right, so you've got a laptop and you're torn between using Linux and Windows on it. You're not a hardcore Linux user, so you're deciding between more beginner friendly distros like Fedora or Ubuntu. But will it actually give you a better experience than Windows? That's what we're going to find out in today's video. I'll be testing my Framework 13 in many tests, focusing on things that actually matter. Like fan noise, CPU and RAM usage and FPS. You know, the stuff that actually impacts daily use. But before we get to that, let's look at the hardware we're working with. Our test machine is the Framework Laptop 13. Powered by the Intel Ultra 5 125H, paired with 32 gigs of RAM, and featuring the upgraded 120Hz display. For the operating systems, we'll be working with Windows 11 Pro and Ubuntu 24.04. And for the tests, we'll be looking at idle with no apps opened, then idle with basic apps opened like Discord, Spotify and Steam, then web browsing and YouTube playback, then Twitch streaming, which is a little more hardware intensive, and last but not least, gaming. Without further ado, let's get into the tests. Right from the start, Windows is struggling. Now I do run Power Toys, which by themselves eat up almost one gigabyte of RAM, but I pretty much need them to make Windows function the way I would expect from a modern operating system. And even though this system runs every day, we still manage to see our friend Windows update in the form of the TI worker pop up. And even with nothing else running, Windows still manages to consume 6.29 gigs of RAM, while Ubuntu handles the same idle state with only 2.77, which is less than half. It's the same story with the CPU usage. While Windows is actively utilizing the CPU while doing basically nothing, Ubuntu is just chilling with its temperatures dropping even into the 30s. Not a great start for Windows and a clear win for Ubuntu. Now when we open some basic apps like Discord, Steam or Spotify, the story is still the same. Six minutes after the idle test, Windows update is still running and trying to find something to make our laptop struggle. But surprisingly, Windows actually needs less RAM to run some of these apps. But in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't help that much. With these apps opened, Windows now uses 9.12 gigs of RAM and the CPU is in the 60s. And just so you know, everything in the 60s means that the fan is running. Ubuntu, on the other hand, sits a little over 5 GB of RAM with the CPU in the high 40s, meaning being completely silent. Again, not a great showing for Windows and another win for Ubuntu. Now let's test web browsing and 1080p YouTube playback. This time I've closed all the apps from the last tests to focus purely on web browsing experience. Windows uses 8.18 gigs of RAM and temps climb to the high 60s, some cores even going to the 80s, which means the fan is actually pretty loud. Ubuntu on the other hand sits at 4.12 gigs of RAM and the CPU temps stay in the mid 40s, which means a completely silent experience. At this point it's getting ridiculous and it's only going to get worse. Now, I know that not everybody is watching Twitch streams, but I just had to include this because it's driving me nuts. Watching a stream on Windows gives us similar results to watching YouTube. Except, if you watch for a little longer, the fan spins up like crazy. The issue seems to be certain cores spiking up over 80 degrees, which makes the fan work overtime. Meanwhile on Ubuntu, for the first time during these tests, the temperatures go into the 50s. But even then, the system is completely silent. Oh, and the RAM usage? Yeah, Ubuntu is still using half as much RAM as Windows. Just like in basically every test we've done so far. And now we go to gaming. Windows should win here. Right? 
I tested Skyrim on both systems and let me tell you, the results are, again, a little bit embarrassing. On Ubuntu, I had to use Proton because otherwise it wouldn't work. And on both systems, I played on 4040p high settings. On Windows, I was getting around 30 FPS while running around Whiterun, but the laptop was loud. Most of the cores were in the 70s and 80s and the RAM usage peaked at 13.5 GB. On Ubuntu, the FPS was actually a little bit lower, hovering between 23 to 28 FPS. But here's the kicker. The computer was silent and wasn't being pushed at all. While for some reason, Proton didn't utilize the hardware fully, but the performance was pretty close to Windows, while being very cool and quiet. The issue with the CPU usage probably has to do something with Proton being optimized for AMD CPUs and GPUs, but I'm not sure, so let me know in the comments if you know. But the RAM usage was around 8GB and the temperature stayed around 60 degrees. So yeah, even with the small performance hit on Ubuntu, the overall experience was much more pleasant. So one of the operating systems is much better, but I am forced to use the other one because I need to use Adobe Premiere and Microsoft Office products. I did try to make the switch, I really did. I tried to use DaVinci Resolve on Ubuntu, but it just wasn't working reliably. I even tried to use Google Sheets, but because I'm importing and exporting Excel files really often, it is not reliable enough. So for now, even though the experience is much better on Ubuntu, I'm still stuck using Windows because of the apps I need to work and for this YouTube channel. It's a real shame, but until those alternatives become more reliable, I just cannot make the switch fully. And it's honestly very embarrassing that such a huge tech company like Microsoft creates this terrible, terrible operating system, which we have to use because there is no real desktop alternative. It just sucks the life out of your hardware and giving you not that much in return. But as we've seen today, Ubuntu and definitely some other distros are getting really, really good. And I hope one day more and more apps will be reliable on them. But once that happens, I will be the first in line to make that permanent switch. But that will be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.